Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in this video I'd like to demonstrate a process for authoring and publishing a frame generator or structural member into a custom content center library. So I've already taken the time to build a sketch. It's just a one and a half inch square tube with an alignment leg, or you could also think of it as a leg where we could insert paneling, etc. And <clears throat> I've also created some parameters where we can control the size of the tube. And the bonus feature here would be we could add some leg notching if we wanted to. And then we can also uh, see we define the PL, which is the part length. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and extrude this. And it's a pretty straightforward operation. I'm just gonna extrude the tube. We've got that PL variable, so I'll go ahead and use that. And here's our tube. So when we're going to be publishing something to the content center, we need to sometimes author it. So things like hoses or fittings for the tube and pipe environment, structural shapes, no exception. We have to come over here, click on the structural shape. We'll find the requirement. We'll say, uh, we'll do other. And then it's gonna grab the base extrusion. The predefined point is fine because it's gonna be the center of the tube. And then I will choose to grab PL as the part length. So we've got that all set up. It's authored and ready to go. It's going to tell me it's been authored. Happy day. We're all set and good to go. So we should save it. And what's interesting is there's a start plane and an end plane. So I could publish this right now if I wanted to, but I'm going to kind of throw a little bit of a wrinkle in here. And I'm going to add in some alignment legs. So I'll go over to my 3D model and I'm going to offset from the start plane. And that's where I have potential leg notching. So we've got a leg notch starting point. And if I do the same thing from the end plane, I can grab the leg notch end, but I want it to go into the part, so I just say minus. Cool, now the reason I'm gonna do that is if we look underneath the body, we've got sketch one, we can share the sketch. So the reason why I'm adding this feature after the fact of this leg is I wanna be able to run it between these planes. So I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this shape for the leg notch, but we're gonna use the between option. So I'll start from this plane and I'm going to end it on this plane. So we're gonna run it in between those two. That way, if we ever need to change the leg notching later, we can run it between those two planes. So you could rename these planes if you want. That's probably a good idea, but I'll just turn them off for now, just to save a little bit of time, as well as turn off the visibility of my sketch. So there's my shape. So you have to be a little bit careful when you're publishing the part. You can add features after you've gone through the publishing operation. Just make sure you know what you're doing. And in this case, I want to because I'm going to control these with those planes so they're set back. If I wanted them to run all the way through, I would have just extruded the tube and the legs at the same time. So we'll go ahead and publish this component. I'm going to my library finding that category, and then everything is already mapped. I'm gonna grab the part number in this case, and I could have also created an IPART table, and that would have allowed me to <clears throat> have multiple sizes, etc. I could have different cut lengths by default, all that kind of stuff, but we'll just leave it as is. And I'm just putting in the D3 so it should be easier to find my particular stuff. And I'm putting in the manufacturer D3 technology so I can utilize a custom filter. So I'll go ahead and publish this. And then we'll go test it out. So here I am inside an assembly and I've already taken the time to set up a simple skeletal model and also to build up a new assembly. And so in the design tab, just to test out our frame, we'll go ahead and insert the frame. I'm going to look in the other category. It found my standard. So again, by putting your standard in there, it's easy to find it. 
to my tube legs and let's go ahead and just place a copy of it. So go ahead and apply one, we'll put another one. Let's see, let's apply that. There we go. And we'll apply that. We may have to reverse that, we'll see. Yep, so we'll have to reverse that one. But that's okay, I'll just throw this one in here so we can kind of see what it looks like. So here's our plane, you can see, or our, our frame, you can see we've got these leg notches. So the reason I added these was if we wanted to miter cut the shape, we could miter cut this and then have these available. So if we wanted to have notches all the way to the end, we could, but now when we go in and edit a particular shape and we come into this particular shape, we could change the leg notching. So that was the whole point here. So if I wanted the notch at the end to be very short, you can see now I can control the leg notching for any given member, depending on what we needed it to accomplish. So a little bit of a wrinkle, but that's the standard publishing process as well as you can add secondary features to frame members. So kind of an interesting twist. Hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.